Hi, it's Kate, and this is the third video for week 8 of Math 23. Let's turn our focus to defining the logarithm and exponential functions. First, we define the natural logarithm to be an antiderivative. The natural log of some number is the area under the curve of the function 1 of t on the interval from 1 to that very number. So the natural log of y is the integral from 1 to y of the function 1 over t dt. We also define e to be the endpoint of that interval such that the area under the curve is equal to 1. From these two facts, it's surprisingly straightforward to prove that the derivative of L uh, with respect to y is equal to 1 over y, since it is set up to be the antiderivative using this uh, definition. And, and it's also a little more straightforward to see that the natural log of some product is equal to the sum of the natural log. So the natural log of xy is equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. Now the exponential function can be defined as the inverse function so that we know that e of l of y is equivalently the identity function acting on y so it returns only y. And from this it also follows that e of x plus y equals e of x plus e of y and that the derivative of e the exponential function is just the exponential function. Now let's take a look at some other uses for derivatives. One is L'Hopital's rule. Suppose that f and g are both differentiable functions and that the limit as x approaches a from the right of f prime over g prime equals l and the limit as x approaches a from the right of f and the limit as x approaches a from the right of g equals zero and the derivative of g, g prime, is less than zero, then the limit as x approaches a from the right of the original function f over the original function g is equal to l. Now, this might look really confusing, but basically all this is saying is that if you have some uh, indeterminate form, you have a function f and you have a function g, and you're trying to find uh, what happens as x goes to a from the right or a from the left or x goes to a or x goes to positive or negative infinity and what you're ending up with when you take a look at this is 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity or something like that. Those are indeterminate forms. Then rather than take uh, these two limits which obviously don't compute because infinity over infinity does not equal 1 contrary to what many people have told me and 0 over 0 also does not equal 1 uh, what ends up happening is that rather than sort of struggle with this limit we find that the limit of the derivatives is in fact the same thing so we can instead take the limit of f prime over g prime and that's equal to l which is equal to the original limit that we were interested in so that's usually how this appears in the literature what's important here is that we actually see why this works and for the most part you may have not even gotten an explanation in your univariate calculus class maybe you talked about how functions are sort of very basically locally linear and so what you care about is their relative slopes or something of that of that manner, but we will be doing uh, the proof in this class. But the idea behind the proof, as you take a closer look at it, in an effort for you guys not to lose sight of what's really going on, is that the basic strategy is when we're looking at the limit of f prime over g prime and we see that it's equal to l, we want to use the mean value theorem to essentially construct an interval on which the distance between f, and f over g and l is less than epsilon. So this is essentially saying, hey, if we can get arbitrarily close to L, uh, then that means that f of, G's, f, f of x over g of x's limit is in fact L. So, th so this idea will be combining a lot of the different uh, tools that you've been using so far in the previous weeks in order to prove uh, this theorem, which you probably have been using for quite some time. 